My name is Nelson Ryman Snyder, and I came to Washington in 1970 uh, to work for the Congressional Research Service. And I was there for about six months when they got a call from uh, Charles Diggs, representative from uh, Michigan, who was about to become chairman of the Committee on the District of Columbia. And he wanted to talk to the uh, D.C. government expert, somebody at the library who had uh, done work on the history of the uh, government of the District of Columbia, what kind of governments they had, because the committee would be considering a major reorganization and the creation of a home rule, locally elected government in the District of Columbia, the first such government in 100 years. And as part of that uh, research, uh, I was uh, asked to look into the uh, water system of the city, how it developed, who was in charge of it, and uh, because that was one of the considerations of the, uh, of the bill and the reorganization would be should this uh, uh, the water uh, delivery system be uh, transferred to the newly elected local government and not be uh, a separate entity under the uh, Corps of Engineers, which it had been since 1874. And uh, so that's uh, how I got it. I did the research on that and found out that uh, after the Civil War, Congress was quite, quite concerned about the uh, having a potable water system uh, in the city because uh, typhoid fever had been a major problem during the war with the troops in the city and of course a uh, major uh, uh, development was one of uh, Lincoln's sons died from the uh, uh, unpotable water that was even piped into the White House. Most of the water was coming from springs and wells that uh, had become polluted uh, over the years. And uh, so in 1874, Congress put the Corps of Engineers in charge of uh, developing a system. Uh, they created a three-member commissioner government, two, two members appointed by the president, and the third would be a general uh, officer. The Corps of Engineers would be in charge of all the infrastructure uh, of the city of Washington, the District of Columbia. And then that began the development of uh, Washington's uh, water system. And uh, uh, one of the first major products uh, projects was building a, a major uh, conduit along uh, uh, what is now uh, uh, MacArthur Boulevard, which was for many years known as Conduit Road. And uh, it uh, in developing reservoirs and the Macmillan uh, filtration uh, plant where water was filtered through uh, uh, sand and gravel and purified, part of the purification process. Uh, over the years, other technologies, of course, have taken over. But uh, and uh, <clears throat> so that's that's how I got basically into the into the system. Uh, later on, uh, uh, in about, about 15 years ago, a regional water authority was established. It was actually taken out of the, uh, uh, that end of it, out of the, uh, the district government, which was in charge of the actual billing and uh, of the uh, uh, water rate and, and, and setting of water rates. Now that's all been transferred to a regional body. Uh, under the old system, the uh, revenue from the uh, uh, water authority was paid into the general fund of the District of Columbia government. So the mayor and city council could tap into that those funds and use them for other purposes in the go in the government, and uh, and not have them just dedicated to maintenance and improvements in the uh, in the water system. And uh, over the period of about 10 years, Congress mandated that a $50 million a year in revenue be set aside in a fund to uh, upgrade the system, to essentially uh, look into separating the uh, water runoff system from the sewerage system, which were in one uh, 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 sewerage pipe system, and look, look to developing a dual system. Uh, so that uh, when there were large storms and there were a lot of water runoff, that all the storage would not have to be a lot of it have to be released into the Potomac, which was a major 
uh, problem with pollution of the Potomac River, and it still is today. And uh, and that was typical of when these systems were developed after the Civil War. Not only in Washington, but most cities, they did not develop a dual system of uh, uh, for the water runoff and the storage. That it was all in one system. And uh, so now the uh, that's that's a decision that the local government has to make, or the local water system too, and there's governments that are involved, uh, whether to develop this uh, dual system or have uh, large tunnels and storage some of the runoff during uh, storms. And uh, the uh, unfortunately, this this half a billion dollars that was eventually uh, built up in this fund was uh, uh, diverted by the uh, District of Columbia City Council and the mayor and other projects. And so that money is no longer available. And now that uh, uh, we're going to have to build up a fund to fund some of these uh, projects and, and updating the system uh, through increased uh, rates, water rates. And um, so that's my basic uh, uh, connection with the uh, water system in the city and how I was involved. And uh, and I'm still interested, of course, as a citizen. I'm not uh, involved anymore in the, in the, in the policy making concerning it. And uh, the uh, uh, and of course there's talk now about how to do this, maybe not developing a whole new system, but uh, uh, diverting some of the rainwater runoff into uh, into the groundwater and uh, and uh, not having it run off into, into you know green roofs and all of that new technology and ideas that are coming into place for that.